Hello, and welcome to Women of Wellness. Today is Be Your Own Valentine. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, we talk show. <laughs> be Your Own Valentine. What? What? Mm -hmm. So we are going to be talking about that, and I'm going to let Natalie kick us off. Oh, are you really? Yes, you're welcome. So much. You're welcome. <laughs> Well, where do you want me to start? Do you want me to just kind of lead in with, we wanted to do this mostly because we know that people think self-care can be seen as selfish. Mm -hmm. uh, women in particular think mm -hmm. that. And actually I'm, I'll be talking a little bit about what I read. I'm sorry, just like set that glass down. This is one of my favorite books like literally one of my favorite books. I've now, I have it in paper. I have it um, in Audible and I've listened to it while on my walks two times. No lie. Wow. Really good book by Emily and Amelia Nagowski. These lovely um, two women. One is a sex therapist and one is, um, I want to say that she has her doctorate like in music, which I'm not even really sure what that does like what what all she does plays or something i don't know teach maybe. any yeah maybe and um this book is to help you it's called the secret to unlocking the stress cycle um so it's to help you better first understand what the stress cycle is all about but they are big 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 about you've got to get back into self-care mm -hmm. in your life mm -hmm. so i um today kind of just wanted to start with Jen and I would like to dispel the myth that self-care is a selfish thing. And we want to give you some tips today on ways to be incorporating self-care in your life every single day. Mm -hmm. And um, both of us could really use that at the end of this week, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, Jen, we don't have videos want... to prove it or anything. So just saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so where else would you, would you like me to talk about the science? Do you want to go straight into the brain? Well, I think, I think what we want to do is talk about, again, like, I love that Natalie just opened with this notion about self-care and, um, and I'm going to be delving more deeply into that tomorrow in my mini retreat on self-love. But I, so today is kind of like a little bit of a nugget and then tomorrow we would go extra deep. Um, but I, I think that what really concerns me is that this is sort of an epidemic. It's, it's almost like an epidemic uh, we don't, we don't talk about. And I think what's interesting is like, we post memes about it. You know, you can't pour from an empty cup, like bless everyone's hearts. Like we've all posted them and talked about it. But I really think that one of the keys of this, it was interesting. I was talking about doing this. And one of my favorite mentors that taught me in, when I was in my yoga program is posting all these beautiful images of she's doing all of these beautiful, like floral, cool with fresh fruit and stuff. Oh, cool. Rose and things that she puts outside. They're like, oh, art. they're ridiculous. And I said to her, I go, oh my God, like I'm fresh flowers. This. Yes. It's, it's yes. Oh, like orange slices. It, they're literally ridiculously beautiful. And they're just, yeah. art. they're just for the hell of it. And I love them. And I, I was telling her about self-care. We were talking about self-care and she was like, we teach what we need. And I thought, but here's the irony. And she's right. And we need it all the time. This isn't yeah. like a, so I think what I, what I also wanted to spell right out the gate is that self-care isn't a, like a destiny. We don't arrive at it. And then we're like, shit, that's good. God, that's done. Check that off my list. No, no. Like mm -hmm. we're going to have to practice self-care our entire lifespan. So, yeah. so getting all the tools and the skills is so huge because you will need them in different variations of a theme throughout your entire life. And so yep. I just, that's a huge thing to me that people begin to understand making time for self-care practices and, and being consistent and knowing what those skills are is just, it's an absolute essential aspect of being a human being. In my opinion, I think that's sure. a huge deal. Yeah. So then, sure. yeah, now if you want to talk about just the science behind well, self-care so and what like, you want I would to love, I'd love to hear from our participants, if you'd like to share any of your own experiences with self-care or the lack thereof, or you have any questions, uh, you know, around self-care before we kind of delve in, because I don't want to go to completely on my brain tangent, but I have kind of a, a behavioral tip first 
Um, and I also wanted to, I'm actually going to read from the burnout book because they, um, they used a study that I really feel uh, exemplifies why it's so important for us to dispel this myth. But anyhow, would anybody like to share? Nobody has okay. to, but I so, just want okay, to so that. I'm just going to call on Marcia. I just see Marcia first. So Sarah, we'll get to you in just a second. Thank you for your patience. Well, the question that I have is because when I start deciding, like when I worked with you guys and I'm doing, you know, working with Natalie specifically right now, other things start to come up and I'll go, oh, I should grab that book. Oh, I should get on that program. Oh, I should start going to that meeting. So how many things is too much? Mm -hmm. Because you you start going, I like the way I'm starting to feel like with the, the group with learning to love your story. I love this, this, all this work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. So I've backed up on the others because I'm thinking if I keep going with what I'm more that I want to do, it might be too much. So how mm -hmm. do I know when it's too much? That's a great question. And I'll, I'll let Jen answer her version of that. What I would say is, so we have this phenomena, I should talk because I have, I'm literally staring at like five planners right now on my little cart, but um, we have this phenomena where we like really, we have task lists, if not in real life, like at least in our mind of, I'm going to have to check all of these off to arrive, which is kind of what Jen was saying earlier. And I think that one of the ways I can answer this is not like saying what's too much, Marsha, but what is real self-care? Real self-care is not a thing. There's tons of things you can put into, you know, that work for self-care, but it isn't an actual thing. It's a, it's a state of mind in a way. Um, and so one of, the, one of the things that I will encourage people to do is one, one non-contingent rewarding thing for themselves a day could be two minutes. It doesn't have to be a big, huge thing. Could be something really small, like um, I was having this conversation because I'm, I'm doing some healthy eating and I was having a conversation with somebody and she was like, yeah, and all that stuff is so expensive. And I'm like, then buy the free range chicken. Like if that's, if that's your one thing for, mm -hmm. you know, for that, do it. Like it's three extra dollars, but the behavior non-contingently is I have worth mm -hmm. and, and behavior is our first language. Mm -hmm. When we're little babies, we cry, big people pick us up, pat us, feed us, change us. So we definitely speak that as our primary language, whether we're telling ourselves that it or not. And so the behavior of doing something for yourself non-contingently, didn't get to my to-do list items, doesn't matter each and every single day is a real strong message to us that I have worth and I have to keep replenishing and supporting that worth. Mm -hmm. So self-care um, in that way, like you almost couldn't do enough of those kinds of little things for yourself. And then I think on the other hand of that, Marsha, I would just say, if you feel like you're getting burned out on how many things that you have, then it's become a to-do list item and not a self-care item. It's slipped out of the mindset of self-care and it's gone into something else. So one of the reasons I did learn to love your story on a self-paced basis is I was like, I, I don't know about you, but like sometimes I'll jump into stuff and I'll be into it for a while and then I'll go away from it for a while and then come back and it has different meaning to me. So I didn't want that to, I mean, it's five months of stuff. I didn't know how to consolidate it more than that, mm -hmm. but it's for you to do, you know, at whatever pace you need to do it. Mm -hmm. I would so say, what do you oh, think? What are your, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I think this is lovely because I had this really synchronous thought this morning that it's, I love all the synchronous city around these kinds of things. I was literally just this morning in 40 minute meditation and Natalie and I are in a minute going to talk about personal stories around self-care struggles because we, I feel like that's really valuable to you all. Like in so, the last two minutes. Yeah, of right. I mean, yeah. No, <laughs> legit. So, so, totally. So what I would say to you is this, I had this, this um, epiphany this morning as I was getting ready that I have been taking in copious amounts of material right now, Marsha. Like I'm like in it. I'm learning about shamanism. I'm learning about business. 
I am developing coaching, all sorts of stuff. I mean, so I'm like, and I'm teaching meditations and I'm in, in my retreat. And I, so like, I'm, so I'm learning in this constant, you know, kind of flow, if you will. Um, and so uh, I have a request, Natalie, for a Beth Johnson. Go ahead, let her in. You know well, her. Okay, I'm not sure to be weird. Because I'm so that was so not in the flow. The reason I'm asking is I want to make sure we don't accidentally have someone in here that it, every should be invite only. Last week we were the last time we did this, we were a little nervous because we posted it, and so we had no filter. And at the end, we had two random people that were trying to sign in, and we didn't let them in. So I'm like, I don't know who that is, and Natalie didn't either. So okay, we're gonna invite her, and I'm so sorry, you guys. Okay. So my idea is this, I spent 40 minutes this morning in meditation after a shit show yesterday, which I will talk about in a hot minute, because it's a great testament to our own personal struggles in this area. And what I realized, Marsha, was I, this morning I was like, oh, I could put on a podcast. I'm learning, I literally, I have 18 books I'm reading. I mean, legit, when I say this, I have like for sure six I'm actively reading and I've probably got 10 more I could be digging into. So I have this stack of stuff. I have all these podcasts and all these audible books and I'm listening and growing all the time this morning. I was like, just sit and listen to music this morning while you get ready. And here's what I, here's my epiphany. I think it is so important when we are in the process of learning and taking material in that we actually conversely, when we want to dig in, because I'm like you, Marsha, I feel it. I'm like in the vortex. You know, that's why I called it. Yes, I was talking about my awful day yesterday. And I get in this zone and it's like all the things I hear something, I buy it. You know, it's like a book or some self help something. The truth is, is that we need the same amount of time to digest material. I actually think it is in our best interest to slow way the hell down, mm -hmm. scale way the hell back. And so what I would encourage you to do, dear, is if you have stuff you're seeing and hearing about that you're like, oh, that sounds so interesting. Make a running list right? Make a running list. I have lists ever. I am, this is legit my life. Like 3M, if I'd known a thing back in the day, I would have invested in these freaking post-its because I live off those efforts. Okay. But what I would say is start making yourself a self-care personal growth list of things you want to check out and then do yourself a solid sit in some material and then sit in quiet and let it percolate inside your soul. We need to take the quiet pause time to really mm -hmm. digest it. This morning, I was so much better for not plowing into another. I'm literally, this is me. I've got notes. I'm getting ready. And then I'm pausing and I'm taking notes. I legit, you should, I should videotape myself one time. Cause you all would be like, what are you doing? So I am constant multitasking, taking material in learning, blah, blah, blah. I think it is better for us. Like lesson learned this morning. That was so soothing to my soul to sit and just no, Jen, sit in the percolate in your meditation, percolate in the lesson you're taking away. So, so I would really encourage that sort of formulation, like rather than getting that, cause I get it. I'm the same. I'm manic about personal growth. Like I love business. Mm -hmm. I love all of it. Natalie, I know she's the same way. We're wired the same this way, but make yourself a list, make space for the pause. So make sure you are taking good care of yourself that way. I honestly think that might be more important. I'm, of course, I know. it's definitely okay. more important for consolidation and integration exactly. into your brain yeah, exactly. um, is to, you know, like actually rest is super important to learning because, and one of the reasons why really growing brains, uh, kids, teenagers um, need so much of it because it, L, I think it's LTP and I'm not gonna remember what that stands for because it's some crazy uh, brain word, um, but it, it only gets produced at night. It only gets produced while the brain is resting or in Delta wave, I think sleep in particular and REM sleep in particular. Yeah. And, and it is like the little lubricant that takes it from you know, the frontal lobe and basically what is a chemical change in our brain when we learned something and then it translates into a structural change through the hippocampus and into whatever the center of the brain is where that, that information or that network is going to reside in. So it, we need pause um, after learning things, but we also need, there's a circadian rhythm sometimes even to life cycling, right? So I'm in my midlife and I, I can tell, like I, there were things that I would read about that I thought I cognitively understood that I did not until I was in this phase in my life because I feel more compelled 
to, um, to have integration time. Mm -hmm. You know, I got divorced uh, a couple years ago, second time. And um, so much happened in that first year that I remember I joined a group with Jen and um, two other women. And we were talking about like, kind of what's your intent for the year. And I was like, to integrate, like to not do anything, but to just integrate. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> right. Totally. So, yeah, totally. it is important. Yeah, yeah, it is. So, so hopefully that helps Marsha. Does that give you a little bit of like guidance on some ideas? Yeah. Ways yeah. Of, like, okay, good. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Natalie, you'd be very proud of me. I just want to, I just want to boast about myself today. I actually took time to just brush my teeth. I love it. Good. Amazing. That's awesome. Yep. Amazing. Good. It is. Thank you. Mindfulness can be built into literally everything that we do. Yep. It's just, it's just being more mindful in the thing. Yep. And it's, it's amazing how your yeah. brain tries to throw in thoughts. And I just went, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. totally. For sure. Totally. Um, For just sure. so you guys know too, I'm so sorry. And we didn't say this at the beginning and we probably should have laid up. We didn't really talk about what we're going to do today. So we're going to have some conversation with all of us here, talk a little bit about how the science stuff works at the end. I am going to be doing some, so hopefully we have time. I, I don't know how we're going to run on time, but hopefully we have time. I have a meditation for everyone at the end. If you want to hang in and join us for that, you're welcome to do that. If that doesn't work for your timing, feel free to whatever. Um, but I just want to make sure I totally, and so I'm sorry, guys, I apologize. I didn't say, Hey, we've got this stuff going on. Natalie's gone. Where did Natalie go? Okay. I don't even know. I don't even know what's happening. Oh, there she is. Oh my God. Oh, I was early. I was just having a total stroke. For I minute. just okay. had somebody open my garage and just had a slight panic attack. It's okay. Slow. Okay. Good. We're all fine, <laughs> friends. It's all fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Lots of people in my garage. Sorry. Road. Didn't know why that was happening. Just any, Marcia, okay. any other thoughts or questions while we're with you? No. Uh -uh. Okay. Thank you so much. Sarah, thank you so much for your patience. What would you, I offered you unmute you. So I think I sent you a. Well, you can unmute me, but my background's also really loud. Okay. <laughs> so feel free to mute. Okay. So for, for like, if, if Natalie and I, if you have a question for us or comment, then what we'll do is when, when it's, if we're going to talk, we'll pause you just so that the background sound isn't there. But did you have anything you wanted to share or a question that you wanted to ask? not at this moment. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, let us, so tell you what we'll do is if you are interested in asking a question, one, you can always just like, Hey, and then I'll try Yeah. I'll try to like, Hey, okay. See you there. Um, and, or you can unmute yourself and just ask Natalie and I, so don't worry, don't worry about doing that. If we miss it, please feel free to, to like unmute yourself and come on in the room for text, you yeah. know, whatever, whatever and works. We can say it. There you go. Okay, so, all right, so Natalie, do you want to, how are we doing on time? So we're already at 1220. I know, right? So I, yeah, so time is a, she's a clicking. So I think if we have a little bit of time to talk about what you think the the brain nuggets are, cause that would gonna. To talk about our stories and things like that, and then get into meditation. Yeah, that would be okay. Awesome. So uh, I wanted to talk about how there is, the, uh, there is partly a myth that if we do self-care, if we take time, it's going to take time away from other things. Mm -hmm. um, this idea that if I say yes to this, then I'm saying no to something else. And so like your, your time itself is kind of like this concrete pie and you only have so many slices through the day. Mm -hmm. um, but self-care doesn't actually work that way in us as a body. And so they did this, this study um, with three groups of research participants. And the first group, they gave them a task to do, then told them to pause, but not to think about something during the pause or not to do something during the pause. And then they gave them, you know, another um, task afterwards. The second group was given rest time and like encouraged for rest. I think they played like classical music in the background and then they were given another task and then there was like a neutral group. And what they found is that the group that got the rest in between had a higher efficiency rate by several percentage points. It was not an accident, even when compared to the, the group that didn't have a tasking task in between. Um, it was, you know, clearly 
that our bodies allow us to be much more efficient and fluid if we are caring for it. So if you think, again, to kind of go back to what I talked about before, if you're thinking about your psyche or your person um, as the mindset for self-care, self-care is really about getting into this resting mind mode. And actually what they call it is um, the default mode. So it's kind of this low grade default mode network in the back of our brain. And if we're not focusing on a task, it turns on and that that's kind of your midday. Now, I don't know that it releases the LTP like when you do the, the rest rest for sleep, but it's like you're in the middle daydream version of and your brain starts to consolidate things mm -hmm. while it's also scanning its environment and its internal environment to hook that and weave that into um, other uh, networks that you already have in your brain. So the phenomena of like, I read something and then I started doing nothing. And in the middle of it, I had this insight of, oh my God, what I read that totally goes with all of this other stuff. Mm -hmm. Th that's the importance of self-care. That's the importance of that's that daydream, not focused on a task kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And it's where things like mindfulness meditation can be very useful because that that's what you're doing to your brain is to get it just into the present moment and away from, uh, so the default network can turn on. So it's getting away from being focused on any one thing and chasing that thought. Mm -hmm. That's sort of like the theta piece when we talked about sound healing and what we really want to do is try to get the brain actually in that theta space because it's almost like and I, this is not the right wording so forgive the, the language i'm going to use here but like almost like a hypnotic right that's where when we do yoga nidra and sound bath um things stuff like that you're you're in that zone right meditation deep meditation is going to do that yoga nidra is going to do that sound bath is going to do that you know mindfulness practice um so i love that there's all of these little things we can sprinkle in there and they've all got this beautiful benefit that in it and I, that's really cool that that all ties together for our conversation yeah. today right about how that like settles it in for us and like it's that quiet space mm -hmm. where I think we get to like gel all the pieces together so mm -hmm. it's just, just don't want to do one without the other it's sort of right. like that perfect right I mean it's like the perfect thing like we want both of those right. pieces to, the puzzle to come clicking together for this yep. best benefit essentially so that's lovely and that's it's the science answer that supports that woo woo. I mean, like people Absolutely. hear about mindfulness and meditation all the time, but have, you know, depending on how you were raised culturally, all sorts of things, like have some really goofy ideas right. that it's just this, you know, those people are weird and they're just, no, they're allowing the default network to turn on so yeah. that their brain can do its work to connect that and weave it into what you already know. And I think the irony too, and I think that most of us would agree, and I'll look for your head shakes if you agree with us or not, everyone that's in with us. But like, I think the other thing is for meditation and practices like this is it's like a time. It's like, I don't have the time. And Sarah, are you nodding? I couldn't see. Okay. I wasn't sure if you, are, if you, you ever experienced a sense of like, it's that time thing that people think about, right? Like I don't have time to meditate. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that from people in the process of encouraging it. And it's like, but you, but you, you need to take that time to be most present to the things that you're trying to achieve. That's how you're going to get there. It's like the vessel. Do you know what I mean? Like, and so I think that's the thing. Now, can we get there through pure brute force? We've all done it. I mean, I've done it. I did it before I started really having a meditation practice and whatever it is practice, it doesn't have to be meditation, but I really think that's the irony is that people will say, I don't have time. And what I would say to you is your time will expand when you're in meditation, you are more focused and effective in everything that you do. So ironically, every minute that you spend there is going to pay out huge dividends for your mental health. It's going to pay out for your focus, your, your awareness, your, your ability to be more mindful, um, to decision, to decision make, honestly, I think we make way better decisions, um, because we're not reacting. We're in a state of like, almost like aware, like a, a just like a removed awareness, if you will, like mm -hmm. it's beautiful. And so I think I wish for people that awareness, like you think you're taking time, but really you're going to create time. And so there's all sorts of beauty kind of nuggets in there that get addressed and are so helpful to us. But that's the other pieces on the other side, you're going to likely have more time. That was my experience. I was worried about taking the time and I ended up with more time. I was way more effective. 
So I spent less time ruminating and stressing and doing all these. I was wasting, I don't even know how much time doing those things. So I was like, oh, this is so much better to not have to do that part of this. So mm -hmm. um, anyway, just another thought on that. Um, beautiful. That's awesome. Did you have something you wanted to read or was that the? That was it. That was I amazing. Mean, I didn't read it lovely. straight from there. That I just great. wanted to. No, I'm I like, love it. No, I read about this and then listened it. to it twice this summer. Okay. I love it. So. Okay. So, and you know what's funny is um, someone that I'm coaching talked about this default mode thing. I'm going to have to do some reading on it because it's funny. It came back around. And I'm like, oh, okay. All right, universe. I'm listening. Just, I'm, I'm just gonna, saying this book is. Awesome. I'm going to need to get my hands up. See, there you go, Marcia. Add it to my list. <laughs> super good. Like, like right all my self-care whatever that I love and I want to listen to and people I want to follow and whatever like oh my god all the things okay so maybe Natalie let's just share about um like personal stories and if it's okay I'll start because yesterday mm -hmm. was a poop show and um it's a great example it's a great example it's a great example <laughs> and I'm gonna say truth truth be told like I got on Facebook and Instagram today and the funniest post ever I had these dumb filters on I was laughing the whole way through because I had these bizarre um filters on um for fun because it's Friday and I was talking about my confession that I wish I had a confession box I almost need to create something in my home somewhere so I can go do this because it'd be really funny um but I was talking about the fact that yesterday I woke up at 5 30 I worked until 5 30 or 6 in the, in the afternoon I intended, and I use this word with the most emphasis, intended I was going to get up, have some coffee, read my six books, cuddle with the dogs, you know, I mean, like embrace the self-care, right? Some meditation, maybe some yoga, literally got five or 10 minutes into reading and my coffee went downstairs, done, sucked into the vortex of all the stuff I'm doing, all the business stuff, posts, all the things I'm doing, creating content, preparing for my retreat tomorrow, doing all this stuff. And so I totally all day long. And by the end of the day, I'm readjusting my web page. And so I'm right. So I'm like in the thick of it. Stuff isn't working. Now I'm starting to get frustrated. I'm bitey and bitchy with my husband who is trying to be generous and helping me. And I'm ragey. I mean, like, Hoo hoo, hoo hoo, like bad. Okay. And so what, so here's the, here's the lesson. Number one, totally ignore my own advice. Right. So one, I just want to own that. Like I did not listen to what I preached to everyone all day, every day. And so that was my bad. Okay. And I knew it. I knew it. Like by the afternoon, I'm like, oh dear. So here's what I do. I send a message to Natalie and I say, this day effing sucks. <laughs> In its totality, this day effing sucks. And, and I was in my 15 minute break between, I think, client five and six. Yeah. Or five and six. Yeah. Yeah. Just, it's to, just, just reference. No, it was, it was, it, yeah. So, so <laughs> it was a long day. And so, so I'm, I, and I don't do it for anything other than to like, I just needed somebody to sit with me in it. It's like, she can't save me. She can't undo my bad decision making. It's fine. And so, and I was blessed because what she does is, hey, would you like me to come over? First of all, she says, and bless her soul, she says, do you want to go to dinner? This is me. Take this awful picture of me, bitch. I'm in my pajamas. Can we talk about it? The, Jennifer's blessed. I brushed my freaking teeth today. So no, I'm not presentable to the human population, number one. And so two, you're welcome to come over. So here she comes, best part of my day, seeing her face, spending time with her, having some cocktails and watching awful TV and laughing till we cry. So my whole day- And it was really awful well, television. Oh, it was awful, but literally probably the most comedic, perfect thing for us on the planet. So, so I'm just saying, and here's, here's, and I gave these two tips. So I'll give them here. Cause they're, they're sort of repeat from what I said this morning. One, you need to throw out a lifeline. If you are not taking care of yourself and you know, my train was off the tracks. When I say off the tracks, I mean, I was in a whole nother state. Okay. So I send out my emergency text to someone that I know loves and cares about me and will just hold up a mirror for me. And so I send out my lifeline and I was really blessed that it turned out the way that it does, that Natalie could one, just respond to me, but two, come and spend time with me. That's, that wasn't even what I was looking for, but I just got really lucky. Second thing is this, and this is my Lotus idea about beginning again this morning got up 40 freaking deep minutes of meditation and felt so blissed out when I was done. And so I gave myself permission to begin again. So throw out a lifeline when you know you're a mess to begin again. And that was what I did. So, so yesterday was a mess. 
today I start over again, right? That's the idea mm -hmm. of the Lotus and the going in the murky muck and coming up every day pristine. That's us. So, so I want one, I want to be authentic. Like I struggle like everybody else. I'm so busy and doing so many things and all of it's important to me. There's not one layer of it, not talking to my daughter when she comes home from work, not spending time with my friend, not my work that I'm so passionate about. Like I wouldn't want to give up any of that. Right. But I really missed the boat yesterday, like bad, bad. And so I want to be honest about that, that all of us struggle. We can know and know and know the things. And it's still, and it's why I said at the very beginning of our meeting today, self-care is a lifelong journey. We don't mm -hmm. arrive at it. We don't do it once. We're going to do it three million different ways and times in our lives. And so I want us to hang on to that because if we also think it's a skill we're going to master, we're going to, we're going to punish ourselves. Right. And so today was like, okay, do over, right. That just do yeah. over because yesterday was a mess. And so today here I am. And so I just wanted to share my story because yesterday was awful. <laughs> it was awful until Natalie got here. Um, and so that was my story about how even we, right, like we struggle with this. This is not something that mm -hmm. Natalie and I are like, oh, we know all the things. We're gurus. No, no. We are literally, I have to ride her. I will be like, are you, this is me. This is a universe. Are you writing this week? I literally sent her these weird texts. She's probably like, oh my God, what in the F? And I'm like, no girl, cause I got you. This is a universe talking or you doing your passion. Um, and so like, you know, so the coach comes out, but like we have to hold each other accountable too, because mm -hmm. we know we love what we do so much that, and, and our families are so important. Our friends are like, it all is a hard thing. It's all a hard thing. And it's a challenge for all of us to do this. And so I just want to keep that very, very real. All right, yeah. Natalie, what would you like to well, share? And so your... there's two things you said that I just want to pull out. One is that connection is a great form of self-care always. always. And that we have multiple connections to multiple things and people. And that, that you just, I mean, all you have to do is call on those connections and okay you're great. And yeah. those connections could be furry. Like they can be our fur babies. They don't have to be actual people. Cause sometimes I don't have it. Like I see people all day and sometimes I don't want to hear people anymore. I, I love you all, but like, I need my time. And so there's, there's other connections that you can use in moments like that. So that's one. And the other is, I think it's really important to point out that there's a cycle, like your Lotus metaphor is that we go in the muck and we come up part of it is that we go in the muck right. that's humanity that's our humanness yeah, totally. that yeah. that we are always recycling in and out of these spaces and that's okay that's part of life that's just normal that's right. just normal like self-care is an important other part of it so if we're if we're outweighing one over the other it's never yeah. it's never a good thing for us absolutely. right absolutely yeah absolutely so my story um kind of to dovetail with talking about my divorce a couple of years ago, one thing that I shifted, so this was definitely just mindset shifting. It was not a thing I was doing. It was a way that I reframed my thinking that has exponentially changed things for me. I, I don't like not doing things. One of my trauma responses is to overwork. It's also one of my passions. So it's a hard line for me to, it's like razor thin sometimes for me to, to ride between those two things. Um, but I would just find myself like having a day like Jen was describing where you were just like, why would I get out of my pajamas or do anything? Like what? I don't, I don't like, I don't have anybody. Nobody's asking me to be anywhere. I'm not working. I'm not. Like, and I just couldn't do anything all day. And then I would get in my head, kind of my old programming was to say, I can't believe that you're doing this. You've got all this billing to do. There are notes that you need to finish. You haven't grocery shopped. This house is built. I mean, like constant barrage, self-criticalness. Um, and I started to practice self-compassion with a very subtle phrase. And that was, I wonder why my body tells me I need rest right now. I wonder why my body is saying that I am so tired that I need this much rest that I can't even do the things that I have to do. Not even the things I want to do, just the things that I have to get to. Wonder why that is. And it just started to shift having compassion for myself. Like you're doing all the things and you're you have this enormous weight on you because you just, you know, revamped your entire life 
marriage did not go well. You're re, you know, starting things out. My kids were living in two separate households. That first time in my life that I had had that happen. I mean, like there was a lot that was going on in my life and just having that reframe over and over and over instead of this, I mean, the self-criticalness would show up. I had to use mindful mind and just notice those thoughts and let them keep going and instead reframe it to, I wonder why my body is telling me I need so much rest right now. I wonder if I need to sleep more. I wonder what this is that's happening to me right now. And it made a huge world of difference. And so for me, that is a self-care practice. Mm -hmm. That's one lovely, nice thing that for sure, non-contingently, I will do for myself every day. If I don't get to something, instead of saying, why didn't you get to that? If that thought occurs to me, I I reframe it to, I wonder why you're so, you need so much rest that you can't get to that today. I love that. And I also love Natalie just to, and I, and then I'll let you keep talking, but I love the idea of being curious with yourself. And I feel Mm -hmm. like that is an incredible act of self-love. And I've been talking about that so much in this, I'm going to talk about it all February in my content. It's all over the place, but I think that curiosity is one of the most beautiful forms of self-love because it's rather than pointing and judging and getting ragey with yourself. It's this, I wonder why. I love, Mm -hmm. like, I wonder what is happening for me. I wonder why I'm going through this. I wonder Mm -hmm. what this meaning for me, rather than you're so stupid. How could you do this again? I can't believe you, Jen. I did not circle the drain. I knew I, I knew I made an error and rather than circling the drain, I reached out, but I love this connection of curiosity. I think that's so beautiful. And so I just wanted to bring in, cause I love that, the point you made. So sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I was like, Oh, I love this idea of curiosity. No, I mean, I'm pretty much. So I'm pretty much, I'm, I'm done with that. Done. Okay, I, okay. It a, it's a good example too, of the, your Lotus metaphor. Like yes, part of what makes that self-care strategy work for me is that I have old programming that pulls me into the muck. My old programming from my family of origin yep. is you better get all that stuff done. And if you are not, there is something wrong with you. There's yep. some, your worth lowers, all of that. Like I'm a human, I was raised to be a human doing, right. not a human being in my right. family of origin. And so this is just me, fra- you know, reframing, yeah. but I needed the muck to be able for that strategy to work yeah. for me. But for me, self-care in a lot of ways is just how you approach things. It's how you frame it. Right. So it's less about the activities. Activities though, and education and things like that definitely fill me yeah. so that I have you know, an ability to do that reframing. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Well said. Yeah. Well said. Um, okay. Well, so let's do this before we get into meditation. I always like to sort of like get you guys squared away because then we're going to do our meditation time, a little singing bowl. I have some, I have a stack of books here, right. And we're going to go through into our meditation and I'm super excited to share that space with you all. And what I would like to do though, is wrap up Natalie, what would you like people to know about what's going on? Let's do our, what's going on quickly. Yeah. And then we'll slide into because that way, when we're done, if you guys are at peace and rest, I don't want to come back and be like, Hey, let's talk about it. No, 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 no. We want to quietly sign off, right? That's yoga nidra. That's what I do. I sneak out the back door <laughs> when you're all in the zone. So we want to leave you in the zone. Um, so Natalie, yeah. what would you like to update people on and what's going on and things? And then I'll do that. And then we'll get going in our meditation. Sure. I am still running Learn to Love Your Story. It's an online personal development course. We would love to have you join us. We just are finishing up our first month, which is on self-awareness skills, but don't worry about jumping in midstream. You can still um, gain in each of my five months. They do build on each other, but it isn't like you can't start midstream. Mm -hmm. So next month or next week, we're going to be starting self-compassion skills. And I, I define these two as the superpower, like Mm -hmm. together, self-awareness and uh, self-compassion you can do anything like the rest of what I'll do and learn to love your story is kind of talk to you about how to shape, you can shape that. Um, But with those two skill sets, if you really get into a practice to make those work for you, you're golden. You're totally golden. So you can find that on learn to love your story.com and registration is in the top right corner and learn more. And all of that is there as well. And there's always a a pop-up when you first come on to the website. And so you can watch the video that talks you through what the five months of courses will be. 
Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I know it's, I know it's such good material. So proud of you for getting that all together. Ah, That's thank a big you. Thing for you. Um, so I have a mini retreat tomorrow, which is self-love cultivating self-love. So we're going to take this and then we're going to expand on it big time tomorrow. I'm super excited. I just finished wrapping everything up yesterday. It is so juicy and so beautiful, and it's going to be so reverent. And so I'm really excited to spend some time with people in shared space tomorrow around continuing to grow this skill. Uh, and so that's tomorrow from one to three 30. And if you're interested in signing up for that, you can go to www laughinglotuswellness.com again www because it's long <laughs> dot laughinglotuswellness.com and so that's going to be um, tomorrow and then I am doing a series always on insight timer which is a meditation app so Monday mornings at 8 a.m central standard time I go in and do um, a live meditation they are so fun it is a global community it has been a life-changing experience to be in there with people I love it so much it literally starts my week off so awesome and so there's great energy in there. So I invite you to join me there too. You can follow me at Insight Timer and then get in those live um, meditations with us. Again, this whole month is all about sweetness. So we're kind of delving into these ideas. I tend to run them in cycles and content so that always I'm opening with some content, a little bit of coaching kind of, you know, just knowledge and wisdom and personal growth. Then we put that into our meditation. So it's awesome. I always stay after we have big conversations in our community. It is so epic. So I invite you into that. Um, and then what else? Oh, and then I'm going to be in Clubhouse doing a talk this week. If anybody is in Clubhouse and not everyone is in that, but if you are, I'm going to be doing a conversation in a room on sleep optimization. So that's going to be coming on Thursday and another one on Friday for what, what we learned as entrepreneurs, our biggest takeaway. So I'm in a couple of conversations. Jen, will you have like a link to those on your social media? No. I don't, okay. I, ooh, that's not true. I did, I did get one yesterday and then it got deleted. And so I'm, I have to go back in and reconfigure. I should try to find the link for okay. both of those. And I would say that really, I primarily put them on Instagram. That tends to be where people, the traffic kind of picks that stuff up better. Um, I will okay. to remember to find a way to, to convey that somewhere on my pages so that if you're interested and you're about looking for spots to come sit in clubhouse, you can come and join us in those conversations. They're so fun. Um, so that's, what's going on this week. So that's kind of all of the all of the jam otherwise it's just the normal old norm, normal old stuff so let's do this let's um unless you have anything else natalie anything i else? do not okay and thank you all for joining us well, yes thank you guys i know so that you much. like to do the quiet exit so i just want to yes. thank, say yes. thank you for joining us yeah. today thanks so much for being here this was so fun to have people in with us we just get really excited when people have questions and thoughts it's just so much more engaging and enjoyable for us to kind of get outside. We like create our content, but we would way rather spend time with other people in here and be really present to what you all are looking for from us. So that's super fun. So we're super grateful for that. Okay, friends, here we are meditation time. So I always invite, so I always invite you. You're welcome. I know Sarah's like in the car, poor Sarah's like nothing's more meditative than riding in the car. So wherever you are, if you're, if it's accessible, I invite you to take a comfortable posture, either seated or lying down, whatever you like is totally fine. I will invite you always to close your eyes. I feel like the less distraction you have, the more deeply you can kind of get into your meditation. Um, and so I invite that as well. What I'm going to do is talk through just a couple of points and then I'm going to come in. You're going to hear me. I'm going to do some readings. Then we're going to have some, some process. You'll hear me play my singing bowl. So there's going to be a combination of all of those things. So beginning to just close your eyes and come inward. What I would invite you to do is just drop into the breath. And what I mean by that is just beginning to really pay attention to the flow of your breath, the inhales and the exhales, the steady flow of the breath. It is the sweetness of our lives. It is the thing that keeps us going. So it's always a great and sweet spot to begin. And I always like to invite people to, to just take a moment to pause and you know pay attention for thoughts and feelings, sensations, things that are coming in. You know, We just got done having a really active conversation so our brains are probably pretty activated. And so we just want to go in and give it a nod. I think there's something really lovely about honoring that and just noticing it. And, and again, with some curiosity, 
and without attaching to it. And then just, that's okay, that's there. And so anything that you're bringing into our time right now, I invite you to box that up. Let's put it in a space that means that we'll come back to that. It'll be there when we're done today. And then place that outside your room, outside your space, whatever you need to feel like you can be really present. We're gonna take three nice deep belly breaths and audible exhales together here as we begin just to kind of drop us in a little deep. We're gonna take a nice big inhale into the belly and then audible exhale it out. Another breath in, expanding the belly, audible exhale out. Last one here, nice big belly breath. And exhale that out. And now just noticing, feeling a little bit more present, a little more grounded. We're in this space together, just sharing our breath, sharing some time and space. And we know we are trained towards putting others first in our lives. And it is an uphill battle for us to find space that doesn't make us feel yucky for loving ourselves. And right now for a moment, as we return to that really even steady breath, normal breath pace, I invite you to move for a moment that breath into your heart. And what I want you to do is I'm just gonna play the singing bowl for a few minutes. And I want you to imagine deeply that you are actually breathing in and out through that heart center. And if it feels good to you, you could place a hand on your heart. You could place a hand on your belly, two hands on your heart, whatever's gonna help you feel connected. That's what I invite you to do. So just rooting here and sitting in the breath, breathing through the heart. sinking more deeply into our space together. I'm going to read from How to Live a Good Life. And it says here, there is a vitality, a life force, energy, a quickening that is translated through you into action. And because there is only one of you in all of time, this expression is unique. And if you block it, it will never exist through any other medium and it will be lost. The world will not have it. It is not your business to determine how good it is, nor how valuable, nor how it compares with other expressions. It is your business to keep it yours clearly and directly to keep the channel open. You do not have to believe in yourself or your work. You just have to keep yourself open and aware. And consider that there is one you, one person with your thoughts, 
wisdom, voice, your unique energy. It's really a miracle when you think about it. What makes you unique is truly your secret magic. Something no one else can claim. As you breathe here, consider the unique qualities that make you you. sweetness with the breath. Taking into account the things that make you who you are. And as I leave you here in the breath, I'm going to read to you from the Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. And he says, if you do your best always, over and over again, you will become a master of transformation. Practice makes the master. By doing your best, you become a master. Everything you have ever learned, you learn through repetition. If you do your best in the search for personal freedom, in the search for self-love, you will discover that it's just a matter of time before you find what you were looking for. It's not about daydreaming or sitting for hours dreaming in meditation. You have to stand up and be a human. You have to honor the man or woman that you are. Respect your body, enjoy your body, love your body. Feed, clean, and heal your body. Exercise and do what makes your body feel good. This is a puja to your body, and that is a communion between you and God. When you practice giving love to every part of your body, you plant seeds of love in your mind, and when they grow, you will love, honor, and respect your body immensely. Every action then becomes a ritual in which you are honoring God. And now as you breathe, considering that transformation that Don Miguel discusses here, that we can begin again and again. And as long as our effort is in doing our best, you will become a master. How can you give yourself compassion for your best effort? And as you consider that, breathing here, allowing that sound to travel in and around you through your heart space, surrounding the awareness, Taking time in that breath, allowing the thoughts to flow through you, the words to flow through you, the sound.
As we move into the five love languages by Gary Chapman, this is what he had to say. And to yourself in your mind for a moment in your heart, I want you to hear these words. I'm sorry. I know I have hurt you, but I would like to make the future different. I would like to love you in your language. I would like to meet your needs. And in that space, as we contemplate what Gary is saying, we connect with the idea that it is our job to fill ourselves up this way, to know what your love language is and imagine the way that we feel loved the most. How do we help others know how to show up and love us if we don't love us? Do you need words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, or physical touch? Likely some combination of that suits you the best, but we need to guide others in how to love us most by practicing this. As you sit here with a breath, considering what is your love language? Breathing here. the sound as it fades, seeking the silence. Seeking the breath. And the last reading I have is from The Rituals by Natalie McNeil. And she says, who says romance needs more than one person? Too often when we are single, we focus on finding a relationship as fast as we can to avoid being alone and looking at the parts of ourselves that need healing. And when in a relationship, we can get lost in it and begin to lose our personal identity. Your most re important relationship is the one you have with yourself. Taking time to do the things you love and explore the things you desire can be incredibly fulfilling and satisfying. It doesn't matter if you're in a romantic relationship or single, Cherishing yourself comes first. As the saying goes, you cannot pour from an empty cup. In order to fully show up for fulfilling healthy relationships with others, you need to feel whole and complete yourself. No other person can make you whole. Only you hold the keys that unlock the most vulnerable layers of your heart. That is why getting to know yourself on a deeper level is essential. Only by growing to love yourself and your shadows will you be able to accept yourself and others fully. In this ritual, you will date your luminous self. This practice is all about coming home to yourself and nurturing the most important relationship in your life. 
During this period, focus on developing a beautiful, nurturing relationship with yourself, a deep knowing that you are whole, perfect, and complete as you are, is the greatest gift you will ever get. If you seek this affirmation outside of yourself, you'll spend your life wanting more and reaching nothing. The root of an integrated, complete self is precisely within the self. When you fall in love with another person, you want to know everything about them. You want to discover them fully, their desires, their dreams, their fears. It's time to turn that around and get curious about yourself. What would bring me the most joy? Plan to give yourself exactly that as if you were wooing yourself. What would I give as a gift to somebody I love? Give that to yourself. Where can I take myself? Where can I make space to just be with myself? When you have the answer, proceed to take yourself on a date doing whatever you enjoy the most. Think of some questions that you might ask the other person if you were on a date and turn those questions back on yourself. Where are you going in life? It's your chance to get curious. Think about what you might want from a date and give that to yourself. What have I wanted to receive from another person? whether it's tangible thing or certain behavior or favor, could you give that to yourself? And listening for those answers, really listen to what you would need to date yourself. How would you treat yourself? What would you most love about yourself upon meeting yourself for the first time? And with that question in mind, just listening for those soul answers. As you sit here in the vibration, considering how you show up for your self-love. Coming back into the breath, back into the body. Slowly beginning to run the thumbs across the ends of the fingertips. Slowly wiggling fingers and toes. And dropping your chin to your chest in a bow, 
of honor and awareness and love for yourself, for your practice, for taking time. And you might bring your hands together at heart center in a prayer position, thumbs touching that heart space, having a moment of reverence and love for yourself. The self-love in me honors the self-love in each of you. So grateful for our practice that it might make us one. Namaste. All right, thanks everybody. We're gonna sign off and let everybody do their day, but I hope you all have a beautiful weekend. Happy Valentine's Day. And first and foremost, I hope you take time to love yourself this weekend. We will see you next time. This is Women of Wellness signing off, Natalie and Jen. Thanks so much for being here and we will be here next time. <laughs>